Hello everyone, welcome to Homemakers Radio. I hope you get a few things done while you listen today, or that you'll just carry your device along while you go on your walk, or some other type of work to kind of alleviate the technical and mechanical aspect of things that we must do that are repetitive in the home. And we used to listen to the radio while we were washing dishes, and that's how I got the I the concept of doing this and so today if you're new here please click the link in the description box and go to the place where I have embedded this video where you will see a summarization of what I have spoken of and also view some photographs of the manse and I would like to welcome you today and hope that you will benefit from anything that I have said I'd like to figure out a way to get here more often and somehow I just get if my big mistake is getting in the kitchen first thing in the day because after it's cleaned up oh let's make some bread oh let's look at this recipe book oh I haven't tried that let me try that and I'm in there all day so I have to discipline myself to stay out of there if I'm going to come here more often also the important thing about the home is that you can be whatever you want to be at home and it's all a state of your mind and also your determination to make it the best place that you can be that you can be in and create it for yourself to suit your likes and dislikes and your personality you'll never find that in a place of employment outside of your home that's for sure today I'd like to thank a lady in in um, Michelle in Colorado for sending me this gorgeous book and I have heard of this book and seen it advertised in a couple of the publications that I subscribe to Mrs. Dunwoody's Excellent Instructions for Homekeeping I have never had this book and of course you know I love this color right now this is my new neutral and uh, so I want to thank her also for the card that she sent and I am going to read out of this today because it gave me some new content and this is just for you to listen while you work. There's nothing here to see. I will show you. I don't have a teacup today, but I have a plate. And this comes from the Pioneer Women series, and it's uh, Melmine. And I have, they're just the little um, luncheon plates. And I have several of these because they work really well for anybody that's coming over, just needs a sandwich or something else. The other thing I'd like to show you today is a little plate that I've gotten so many compliments on. And it's by Corel Livingware, made in the USA. And it's, practically, it's chip resistant and break resistant, practically. I mean, you'd have to take a big hammer to it to make it, to make it break. But what they have all liked about it is I could serve one biscuit in it or one uh, brownie or one whatever it is a uh, piece of fruit in it and it's so small you can't really get paper plates like this and they always look on the back to see what it is because they like it so much I'm thinking of reducing the time I spend away from my home looking for things like I'd like to get a few more of these but then I would take a long trip, look around, maybe not find it, have to come back, maybe go to another place. So I think I'll just get online and order it. Then I'm just guaranteed to get it. That is one of the beauties of this era that we are living in if you wanted to cut down on the time that you're out. Now for some people, they need to get out. I understand that. And so this book that I got, I will read to you in just a few minutes. And one of the things that she says in her card is that the Christian women around her and the minister's wives are all at work. And so there's no one really uh, to, to refer to or to get any kind of advice for about homemaking. And I, I know that experience because I experienced that when I was 20 in uh, my early days of homemaking and what a shock it was because it was such a change. I grew up in the 1950s. Women were at home and even if you didn't get to visit them often, there was some reassurance in the fact that the woman in the on the next homestead was home. You knew she was going to be there and uh, not out all the time working outside of the home and that all was well as long as you could see her light and and uh, the elders and the deacons wives 
the ministers wives and everyone went to work in the 1960s and i remember the shock i remember the feeling i had just had my first baby and i remember not having a car and i thought well i'll just phone one of the elders wives and um, maybe she could come over and help me with something or take me somewhere i needed to go and i felt that it was really necessary and what a shock it was to find that these people were all working outside of the home and uh, the idea of course by the powers that be for leaving the home was to create another bunch of taxpayers and get them out of the home create more revenue and uh, it really had nothing to do with what was best for the family and you will find that out if you want to study it today I'd like to talk to you about first of all giving your home dignity by the way that you keep it one of the first people that had the best influence on me in the in my early days of homemaking was after I got over the shock that the Christian women weren't going to be there for uh, the young women at home I found Emily Barnes books and she often collaborated with other authors and artists and created beautiful books about home life and about the home they were always reassuring always very relaxing always uh, spiritually oriented always uh, had hospitality in view and for yourself too so one of the things that we can do is get dressed up and also dress your home up and I've seen a lot of people that would uh, have beautiful homes but the concept of them dressing up for their home just seemed to be lost on them I would suggest that you dress up for your home first and the reason being that if you find yourself kind of unable to focus on what you should do the idea of dressing up gives you some kind of beginning gives you a start and also gives you a feeling of dignity you will stand a little bit different how many of you slump when you think about what needs to be done in your home today how many of you just kind of have a slump that's a feeling of um, on being not being confident a feeling also inferior in doing it so what we want to do at least I do anyway not everyone is the same is to make these little things that overwhelm us when they're all at once oh, you've got to do the dishes do the laundry clean the bathroom sweep all these things seem like dignified important things as a matter of fact if you've ever looked up how much it would cost you to hire people to come in and do that is a tremendous amount of money so there must be something important about it and if the woman at home has to create that feeling because no one's going to come in and say you're at home full time what you're doing is very important you just keep doing what you're doing because it is wonderful nobody's going to tell you that so what you have to do is get dressed up first thing i like to dress to uh to go with what i'm going to do and if i'm going to be providing any kind of uh, preparing any kind of a meal or food i like to uh, wear an apron to go with it or you know match my tablecloth or something like that it just it, any little thing that would give me some kind of motivation to make me feel like it's all connected and coordinated with uh, my mood and so getting dressed I think is really important and I know it's hard for ladies to get over this habit of wearing a t-shirt and jeans but if you could at least make yourself some of these little kind of a jacket shawl to go over things to change the color to change the to, so that every day of the week is different and to give distinction to the day and of course we don't know what the day will bring we don't know how long life is going to last I think you should live it the best the prettiest the freshest the most creative that you possibly can and I know people have to summon up some of this this creativity and this uh, uh, sort of courage for the home you wouldn't think you would but home does take courage and it takes courage to stay there and stick with it and do it so my purpose here is to keep 
you from feeling uh, mechanical and dry about everything you do. Well, you know, when I first got into homeschooling, I have to tell you how, what a change that made in my life and my attitude. So even if you don't have children, you ought to get involved in it and just do it yourself. Order yourself a curriculum and get going on it. What it did is it changed things that used to uh, used to feel dry and I, I would just grit my teeth and it felt like fingernails going over a chalkboard. Some of the information that we had to learn just had no meaning to me. But when I got into homeschooling, the books portrayed things in such a delightful way. And also, and it wasn't a fantasy or anything. It was just showed the deeper meaning of everything from uh, dates, uh, you know, in the er different eras, like the which century was you know what was invented in what century and what was happening at the time giving us time charts also the mathematics science history uh, grammar spelling it all had deeper meaning to it it all gave you life and it would include the scripture and god's purpose for us in everything for example when learning to speak or read or write, the ultimate purpose for it was given to us. And we were told through these materials, um, God began his uh, relationship with man with speech, with speaking. And man speaks back to God with prayer and writing uh, the whole Bible is written, how important written language is to God and how important our language, whatever, wherever you live, how important your language is, is given to you so that you might uh, provide hope and love and encouragement to people in your own language. And just to how important this is and how dry and awful it is to have an education, which I went to public school, you know, and that's why I was so fascinated with with what I learned in homeschool. So this is what I'm trying to do with the home making business is that you get dressed up because you have a purpose and you have um, a soul and you have a life and it's more than a mechanical kind of um, state of being. It's that everything has a meaning and even your sorting through things and going through things and cleaning out the shelves and the boxes and, and things like that have a meaning. And so I learned from some of the things that I read from Emily Barnes, put on a little music, light a candle, and get going on some of these tough jobs. I had also thought that I would might try to alleviate the creepy house feeling that some people go through. I think it happens to people who live alone more than anything. And when I started to spend more time alone, I would feel these uh, little moments of creepy house feeling. And yesterday I had the creepy house feeling and I decided I'm not going to let this stop me. I'm not going to let this beat me. So I went into the garage room, which is also a storage room. It's It's been developed. It has a floor in it. And I have uh, cleaned out some of that. And that's been one of my goals is to get a section of that cleaned every day and sort it out so that if I get sick or something happens and my children aren't stuck with it. So I got that done. I got the kitchen cleaned. I got some correspondence done. All to, and every time I finished a job, I still that creepy house feeling is still upon me. So I do something else. So in order to try to get rid of this creepy house feeling, I got my ordering done, my food order done, and I got the part of the garage cleaned out. I got the laundry done, the kitchen cleaned up, a meal prepared, and I think I even went to the grocery store. But And I was trying to get rid of this creepy house feeling. So maybe that's the purpose of it, to get us going. And so the other thing I'd like to stress is in homekeeping and house house cleaning and homemaking that you have a day of rest if you can possibly tolerate it for myself i have found that i don't sit still long enough someone suggested i get a cat you know to get rid of that creepy house feeling i don't think that would work with me because it would be unfair to the cat i um don't sit down long enough uh to for the cat to the cat would become nervous <laughs> cats are supposed to calm you but i'm not ready to get one because it wouldn't be fair to the cat and 
and anyway, having a cat wouldn't guarantee that I would have that fulfilling feeling in the home or the house because I would probably create it myself just by worrying. <laughs> and so, um, so if you can have a day of rest, if you can possibly do it, it's, it's hard, but it will lessen your anxiety and lessen your confusion and make you more focused. Now, the other day I was reading a book about sense, sense and, uh, uh, essential oils and one of the things that struck me was there was a reference to myrrh that's an essential oil as a um, way to prevent apathy I thought that was really interesting so I went and got a bottle of it that I had and I just smelled it and I just kind of observed and uh, got a little bit more interested in a little bit more keen on doing some things around me and I think it might help. I think I would have to have a little scent of it on something every day or in my diffuser. Now, one of the three of the things that I have suggested that I am trying that might help you to get more focused on your home is to get dressed and get fixed up. Some of you wear makeup and you do a pretty good job of it. Well, if that makes you feel better, you do that and get your hair fix up how you like it. Look in the mirror and be happy with the way God made you and smile and don't be don't be intimidated by the world's uh, standard of beauty or looks because that can be that comparison can be your downfall because everybody is beautiful in their own way and everyone is unique. I was uh, so I'll just finish these three things and one was to get dressed, get fixed up, do something nice for yourself. Uh, that might be the last time you see yourself in the mirror all day. Get get presentable. You don't know who you're going to have to open the door and look at and talk to. You don't know who's going to come by. And some of you who think you're so completely alone might be surprised how often you see people and they see you and how your appearance is your testimony. It is the testimony of how you feel about God. It is the testimony about how you feel about life. It's the testimony of how grateful you are for every breath you take. And it's a testimony of how content you are and also um, how creative you are too. So I was I was uh, taking one of those days of rest one day. I just could not seem to get anywhere, and I was just feeling apathy, you know, and I, and I hadn't read about the uh, the myrrh yet, and so I just kept moving around and just not getting anywhere and plugging away at this and that, and I just thought, I'm just going to have to sit down for a minute. So I, I sat down and got my little device out, and I thought, maybe I'll find an old, old movie to watch and just... Uh, just rest my brain and rest my body for a while and I ran across this weird movie about a woman who took and I was I'm trying to bring this back to not letting beauty or life um, anyone create a standard for you about it even in your home you've got to be so careful of of the magazines and the decorations just take what is practical for you and and don't take it all uh, too seriously but just enough to help you and it was a woman back in the 1940s. I think it might have even been a black and white film. And it was British. And it was about a woman who lived a very lonely life. She was not rich. I don't think she had anything uh, except a little job in a shop. And I don't even think she had a home. Her parents were gone. Her relatives were gone. She had no one. And she, in this shop, they sold a magazine that was a glamour magazine from the from that era, the 1940s. And uh, so she learned a lot from it. She thought, well, I'll just take this magazine every month and I'll learn. And she learned how people ate in fine hotel restaurants. And she learned how people dressed to go to some of these fine places, these locations. And she took her sewing machine out and she took the magazine and she started to sew these clothes. and. So she could build herself up a wardrobe and every year she'd take her earnings and go to one of these places and just uh, just eat there, stay a night there, um, and then come home. And 
that was her vacation. Or she might have stayed longer, but she took this uh, magazine and became so seriously involved in it that it made her sad that it it wasn't really that way when she went out. But I just thought it was also a really good thing to to get yourself interested in making the place that you live the best place ever. Because what she learned, I think, in the end of this quirky film was that uh, life out there can be just as disappointing as life in your own little world at home and uh, use all your money and your effort and your time to make that the best place and uh I've, it's nice to go isn't it it's nice to have a holiday but you know you could use the money for something nice and make your home a little more luxurious and i know that people it's good that people like to get out and go camping because it gives you another place to go and it's a home and uh that where you don't have to spend a lot of money on uh, vacation spots that's nice but for the most part we are going to be at home and one of the things that i learned from watching that was it's nice to be creative and to learn things it does expand your mind it's really good but the home is where you need to make it the absolute best place so i say get dressed and then go on a walk through through your home and that would i got that from the 10 minute best 10 minute exercise um, practice and that was to go for three minutes just normal walking just to warm yourself up warm your body and mind up three minutes and if you've got your phone that has the little seconds on it you can keep track of that go for um, a one minute and i just have a little route from my home in my home i've kept all the aisles clear i don't have a coffee table i've i've got room to walk and uh and then there's the uh you can do that three times and you can walk a little faster in between for the little spurt walking but then the other thing is to take and sweep just go around and sweep this gives you ideas and the walk through and the sweeping energize you and give you motivation and focus on what needs to be done and so even if you live alone these things are really important also if you can find an exercise program that you like online to follow that's gentle that helps your brain i often think maybe that creepy house feeling has something to do with our posture uh, because when i start walking or when i start doing some of the stretches of uh, some of the programs that i watch on uh, youtube I've, i it goes away and so it could be a pinched nerve <laughs> and the other thing that i suggest is you air out your house now i learned that from the jane austen diet by brian kozlowski which i i it's quirky too it has it's uh he has colorful descriptions and things and and it's but i really appreciated it going natural i really appreciate the approach of being nature focused and one of the things that he mentioned is that they regularly aired out their house how long has it been since you have opened a door or a window and just aired out the house on purpose and someone was telling me the other day uh, when i got that creepy house feeling i called my friend and she said that when her children came in from outside she didn't hurriedly say shut the door shut the door because you know you're gonna lose all this heat or lose all this coolness or whatever the weather keeping the weather out she said i needed that burst of fresh air to come in so if they came in and the door was still open and they were um, not quite in i didn't say shut the door and so even though she was in the middle of, of a cold snowy winter she let all that come in because she wanted that fresh air and so this is another thing i would add to getting yourself dressed going a walk through through the house and sweeping is to air out your house on purpose it doesn't have to be more than five minutes you go you give it a try see if it makes a difference go and you know uh, what is it through open the windows and and out throw out the sash <laughs> and uh just go and try that for five minutes if if you are also suffering in some way um, emotionally and you can't seem to get a feeling of life the kind of life you want go and open those windows for just a little bit 
The other thing to do is if you feel overwhelmed, if homemaking is rather confusing to you, is to ask God for help. Ask God to stabilize your mind. Ask God to make your home into the pleasant place that he wants you to have and that you would like to have because he cares. He cares about the kind of atmosphere that you would like to have. And so create a life for yourself in your home and it's going to be up to you because I doubt anyone's going to come and rescue you. Unless, you know, there's a new there's a new enterprise going to come out of all of this because so many women at home, they're now going to have maybe door-to-door -door home mentors or people that are very clever that need to earn a little money and are very expert at it that you can hire to come in and coach you a little bit. But in the meantime, you can just use Homemakers Radio. And I do appreciate you coming and listening today and to use this as, uh, see you're using me, <laughs> as a motivation to do what you need to do at home. You can carry, I have these little cards that I like this size. Mr. S buys me a packet of them every now and then. What a mess. I have never learned not to write little notes and leave them around. And I always wish I could get them in one book and I can't. So what I like to do is when I'm doing those walkthroughs or even sweeping, and I have always try to have a pocket, put these in, take it out, and write down things that I think of that I need to do or that I'd like to do. So I have two things what I need to do and what I'd like to do. And so someday when I come here, I will tell you what was on my list of what I'd like to do because some of them are just way out <laughs> that you would never ever think of as something that I would like to do. So after you get all that done, and then I think decluttering is the main thing. You don't have to do, if you get kind of extremely bored at home, you can always rearrange everything. And this is why I'm sitting in this focus of the houses, because I don't think I've ever shown you this little arrangement back here. It's the opposite end of where I usually broadcast. But I created this around a, um, an electric fireplace, and I have a little tea set there, and just this little vignette sort of look and I always remembered from a sense and sensibility Emma and Harriet sitting in a similar situation I don't even know if it were was wicker chairs like this these are really old but I uh, think in the scene if I can ever find a, a snapshot of it I will put it on my post for you as they were looking at some things in a little basket and discussing life what was important to them and they were sitting in front of this little fireplace with roses on the top always thought that was so charming and so I've created this because there are some people when they come in they don't want to sit at the dining table they just want to have a, a cup of coffee or a cup of tea just just right there so it just makes it a little less formal for them Now today is Saturday and it's letter writing day for me. So I have my letter desk out and all those things out. I'm hoping to at least chug out one nice thoughtful card or letter today. But I'm going to read from this delightful book, Mrs. Dunwoody's Excellent Instructions for Homekeeping. And I'm going to read just a portion of it that I found. And I love I love the artwork on this on the page. And I love end papers too, but there weren't any end papers in it, just plain. But still I like uh, the old-fashioned writing and so I'm going to read from this and this was published in 2003 but I believe it was probably from um, an older book it was what like life was like a hundred years ago okay so published in 2003 so let me read a little background uh, of this. In the spring of 1866, Carolyn Dunwoody sat down at her kitchen table and penned the first entry in a notebook that would take her over 50 years to complete. That's why I'm encouraging you to have your little art journals or little journals because you don't know what, what where it might go. And it also will give you something to do, especially those who are alone. 
or those of you who have a chaotic life, give you time to settle down and kind of get your bearings and kind of have some stability there. That that uh, my mother-in-law was a preacher's wife. Her life was just full of crazy incidents and things that just would have uprooted a normal person but she sat down every night and wrote in this little tiny space in a five-year diary some of the events who they saw who came over what they uh if they went out where they went what they bought um what who wrote a letter to them and what kind of housekeeping she did it just didn't take very long but it stabilized her and she also could look back and say this was if someone said when did you send the uh, check to pay this bill she would know because she recorded it in her diary and it also it seems rather dry and mechanical you get started at it it will give you a feeling of self-worth that many of us have lost or don't have because who's giving the homemaker a sense of self-worth and so in the spring of 1866 six, thank you by the way for the content <laughs> Carolyn Dunwoody sat down at her kitchen table and penned the very first entry in a notebook that would take her over 50 years to complete. Fleshed out with borrowed wisdom, recipes, and household tips, and etiquette from women of her day, she had begun her receipt book during the devastating days in Georgia immediately following the war between the states. Life was hard and rations were terribly scarce. But the women of that time were very enterprising when it came to necessities such as cooking and housekeeping. They began to recognize that their old way of life was gone forever and the world was not likely to ever be the same. Now, I've read a lot about the women of the South and I had a, I have a book called Calico Chronicles about how they managed to use cloth and preserve cloth and create garments to wear when the blockade was on to keep them from selling their cotton to the uh, manufacturers and uh, it was just all so much created that crushed the south was so terrible and just how they actually created an advantage of it because they created their own styles and they weren't dictated by any other type of fashion house and they created their own styles just by their thrifty ways and uniqueness of putting different cloths together and using strips of cloth to hide torn um, seams or thinness and so anyway this is similar to that mrs dunwoody's advice and words of wisdom were meant to be passed down to each generation of women as they married and took up housekeeping or homekeeping as she called it i believe it should be called homekeeping uh, for some reason housekeeping just sort of uh, gives you the connotation of uh, this rote work, just this, uh, you know, washing a floor or something, but not the soul in it, whereas homekeeping gives a, a more of a spiritual feeling, the word. Her instructions were meticulously written in her distinct style with such care and attention to detail that the notebook seemed almost holy, like a book with a soul of its own. And that's uh, something that someone I know that did what was a member of, a, of the church here years ago. She said that uh, she had gotten had a bout of illness and ended up in the hospital. And while she was there, she started to think about what would happen if she had not been able to come home. So she started a notebook while she was still there of how to do things at home for her children and her children were just approaching being teenagers and so she she went through every little detail how to clean a, a sink how to clean a bathroom and she would even mention you know remove everything and put it here and then then take this and and clean it with this and just everything how to clean up after themselves how to how to cook how to sew how to and every little detail now of course they could have learned any other way you can go get courses you can read books you can learn any other way but isn't it nice you know to open a book and and read it from someone who has done it So I'm going to uh, skip a little bit more of her biography and read that more of that later and go on to the art of homekeeping, which is the name of the title of one of the sections here. So this, these are her own words. I'm just checking my notes here to see if there's anything else I need to say afterwards.
All of us carry in our hearts and minds the image of our ideal home, realized or not. It is a place where we feel we belong. A rightness, at homeness, a knitting together of self and the world. Home is a place to become yourself, to rest and surrender all pretense. You know, that was one of the things I wrote in my notes before I even read this, was that you can produce the things you enjoy at home uh, and a variety of things. And you can also reduce a lot of the anxiety that women feel today by what they do at home, by putting away things that are aggravating or creating anxiety, turning off the things that create anxiety, and uh, replacing them with things that give you peace. I did this years ago in the, in my early 20s. I started to analyze what I had hanging on the walls and took them down if they weren't cheerful or edifying, just maybe uh, paintings that commercial paintings and things that maybe did not have all the things that would have brought me peace. And I started replacing them and I started replacing my books. I started replacing anything that gave me kind of an off feeling just to, because a homemaker, if she's in the home a lot, which I, I was at the time, in the home a lot, really needs, it's essential. It's uh, one of the essentials. It's like I say, Victoria Magazine, I encourage you to uh, you know I think they're running a sale now and it's a dollar an issue for a year it might be a total of fourteen dollars or twelve dollars I can't remember but it's an essential uh, you've got to have that stimulation and you have to have it in the home and in a way we have to treat our homes like they are great um, hotels that we live in and if you ever had to stay in a grand hotel or a bed and breakfast you'll notice they keep their flowers fresh they keep their bedding fresh they keep the floors swept they keep the hot tea and coffee everything cleaned up and you always smell this nice smells they have uh, lemon flavored water or lime flavored water in a, in a dispenser they have everything to keep the human being uplifted because of course this is the hospitality business and their living depends on keeping the customer relaxed and happy you have to approach the home that way or you can just sit there and get depressed and so this is one of the reasons that I read things like this you can produce the things you enjoy at home and one of the things that that I think is important is variety. That's why you see me changing things around all the time. But also, you know, I decided one day I was just going to sit in a different place when I wrote a letter, and I just moved to a different place. I just wanted to see uh, if that would make a difference. And all the things we can do at home, and those of you who are having summer now, the things that you can do in your yards, on your deck, on your uh, patios, just amazing what you could do. I even took one time my sewing outside and, and sewed outside in good weather. And there are so many things we can do to expand our home life and to make it better and quit looking for things out there. I was reading someone's article the other day who had written about how people were complaining because uh, they weren't allowed in restaurants or they weren't allowed because they hadn't... Uh, they didn't have a certificate or something, some kind of health certificate. And uh, he said, why are you complaining about that? Some of the food in those places is not really healthy for you, not really good for you. And uh, that they couldn't go to commercial areas. When actually he was trying to explain that you're probably healthier if you don't. And there are other ways of, uh, of doing business. And so... And so, yes, some people do need to get out more, and other people uh, can adjust to the home if you keep it interesting. So you can produce the way the things that you enjoy at home in a variety, and uh, you can start uh, focusing on what you are doing. Like, for instance, I said uh, earlier about walking, you know, warming up and, and walking, going on a walk through through the house. Well, stop looking for results. Uh, stop using the words, I wonder if that will work. And I remember there was a era we went through 
I don't know if it was 10 years ago, but women would say, uh, well, well, did that work? Does this work? Does And I had to quit doing that because that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches us to do what is right and what is good and what is virtuous uh, and to think on things that are lovely. And instead of thinking, well, does that work? I just want to do something that works. Even homeschooling, ladies, you can't say, uh, well, I hope this works, or I did it because I wanted it to work. You do it because it's right, and then God gives the results. Do you think that the spies that came out of Canaan that were spying out the land, um, do you think that they were too much involved in whether or not they would win or whether or not they would work but the ones that gave the good report were doing it because God told them to do it he told them that we're going to take the land and and ask them to spy out the land but you know uh, we are too much into all results we are too much into results well yes you don't want to do things that bring bad results no absolutely not you have to use wisdom but sometimes you have to do things in the home as a homemaker because it's good for you and it's good for the home and you might say I swept yesterday and they just messed it up so I'm not doing it again <laughs> but you're doing it for several reasons for the example for your own um, mental health too because it's a, a pain to look at a mess all the time um, there are so many things so many reasons to do things besides just getting results now of course don't do things that you know bring bad results but do be focused on doing what is right. So besides going, uh, besides doing things because they need to be done, we need to do them because they're good for us and because the Bible says that women should guide the home and guard the home and be keepers of the home. That the home must be tremendously important. You know, isn't it interesting? I think maybe you would find this fascinating but look how many times you there are probably two times in the new testament where god talked about guiding the home guarding the home and keeping the home but he didn't say anything about any other business like keeping the shop <laughs> or uh you know running your business he does say we have to have integrity in business yes we see that uh, but look look at how the home was singled out and uh, nothing, nothing else. <laughs> so, okay, so I've read this a little bit before, so I'll just, because I interrupted myself, I want to read it a little bit over again. I always kind of go back, backtrack. All of us carry in our hearts and minds the image of our ideal home, realized or not. It is a place where we feel we belong, a rightness, at homeness, knitting together of self and world. Home is a place to become yourself, to rest, and to surrender all pretense. As dear mother used to say, home is the place where you can restore your mind, body, and soul. Now just remember, if you're going to say that and believe that, don't come home and or turn the home into a place that you're constantly, your senses are constantly jarred by bad news. And I'll be reading you a scripture about that pretty soon. Because then you constantly have this nervous, anxious feeling and you don't know what's wrong. You can't put your finger on it. And But all things have a remedy, uh, have a natural remedy, have a God-given remedy. So don't get into thinking that uh, all you have to do is take a pill for something because you won't correct what is wrong. You won't turn off the news. <laughs> It is a source of emotional nourishment. It is where you can close the door and open your heart. What a beautiful statement. Close the door and open your heart. I have said before, when you get finished with all these things that I have suggested, getting dressed, going on a walk through your house, sweeping and picking up the clutter and also the other things that I have suggested, Go outside and then come back in as your guest. And then you see it with new eyes. You think, how would I feel? How would a guest feel that's coming in? Feel like a stranger and come in and look at it. That is just the most beautiful feeling. It must feel a little bit like on the six days of creation, at the end of each day, God 
would say it is good. Wouldn't that be nice to come in as a guest and or even as you finish each room, close the door, open it, walk in and say, this looks good. <laughs> Okay, we often take our homes for granted, but when we steep ourselves in our home, I need to back up because I missed a sentence here. The home is a source of emotional nourishment. It's where you can close a door and open your heart. If there is any meaning to existence, we surely are close as close to it in the home. Yes, ladies. We often take our homes for granted, but when we steep ourselves in our home, a deep sense of place begins to emerge. It may take some of you longer to develop that feeling if you have not been home for most of your life. If you're just now settling in at home or you have worked outside the home, it's going to take a little time to get used to it because you will have a feeling of, of restlessness every now and then. And but if you can get I always thought if you can get past three days of it, you can settle down and feel more at home at home than somewhere else. Uh, life becomes more meaningful at home. We begin to have a greater spiritual awareness of what our home is and should be. Perhaps our most inspiring thought is that our homes, if we are to live well in them, require and deserve a lifetime of the most careful attention. A home absorbs caretaking like a sponge. All the hours we spend tending to it are never in vain, for everything we give to our home is in turn given back to us. Our homes will be only as generous and nurturing as the effort we invest in them. Well, that is a, a great uh, description of modern feedback. <laughs> You know, and so we come in to the house and we're all immediately depressed. We slump because there are things out of place or things that need to be done that we haven't done. And, and it can be really disappointing because if it's to be, it's up to you and no one else is going to do it. You just have to kind of have an uh, put your mind to it and forget about everything else. Just put your mind to it and... Some things at home you can't get too emotional about because if they are jobs, sometimes you just need to roll up your sleeves and do it. How can we create this special place? A home that rises up to meet us when we come through the door. One that calls out to our soul and draws us in like a magnet. A home that calms, soothes, and rejuvenates and restores. Let us begin by considering the five senses, sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell. Those five senses are what many homemaking books have been based on. Colors have a grand effect on our nerves and should be considered carefully. What colors are pleasing to our sight? A bold and bright cranberry damask wallpaper with Copenhagen blue trim or the quiet soothing tones of a seafoam green or pale yellow gold inrod. The colors in our homes should reflect what is most pleasing to our eye. I wanted to stop and show you this little bookmark. My daughter made this for me back in 1992, I think it was. Um, and it is a rubber stamped seashell set there. It was just one rubber stamp. And then she had glued on some sand from a trip to the beach that we took. And it's still on there. And then the, the scripture that she put on there and then some little seafoam green ribbon says the Lord is my rock my fortress my deliverer my God and my strength in whom I will trust Psalms 18 2 well that's kind of appropriate because there's rocks there at the beach and sand and I'm going to uh, put this in uh, plastic or cellophane so that it uh, so to preserve it further uh, because it's so precious and I never got another one I think we take a lot of things for granted that we'll just get more where that came from but might not be true <clears throat> the colors in our rooms should reflect what is most pleasing to our eye. Color strongly affects mood, so pay attention to the way various colors stir your emotions. If you want to make a strong statement in a room, choose strong colors. For a soothing effect in a room, choose pastel or cool colors. Experiment 
with color combinations. Some of my favorite color combinations include cream and violet or rose blush and chocolate chocolate accented with sage green or cream white with red. Maroon and pallid sea green is also beautiful. Ask yourself, what do I look like to look at every day? Well, if you've ever gone to any uh, historic house tours in this, the old Victorian homes, you will notice what their colors were if the original wallpaper is still there. And they did use a lot of this deep green and burgundy. If you'll watch the movie, uh, the BBC production of North and South, and it was about the uh, cotton mills in the uh, in England back in the I believe was it mid 1800s. Still kind of the Regency area era from what I've seen of the clothes, that, the costumes that were in there. Uh, there the cotton mills were closely related to the places where they dyed the cloth and many of the characters in this movie had those colors on which indicated what colors they were dyeing the cotton and those were also on their wallpapers so that's how you can determine what what the colors were that they liked and there had to be a reason for it too you know, today we've got so many flashing lights, so much electricity, so much uh, colored around that perhaps the plain white walls is more agreeable to us. But their wallpapers were, and I've noticed wallpaper, like on the back uh, of behind me, there's a wallpaper someone gave me that was from England. She gave me two rolls of this wallpaper. And I decided instead of painting, I was just going to use that wallpaper. And it has lasted longer than a paint job. Paint has to be replaced every couple of years. It just, it fades out, it chips, it scratches, it, um, it discolors. But the wallpaper has been there. I believe that wallpaper has been there almost 15 years. And I still haven't uh, traded it out yet. But I, I, I see why they liked the wallpaper. Papered walls can achieve very specific effects. Vertical stripes make a room seem taller. In a small room, a large pattern can be overpowering, but in a big room, it often has a cozy feel. The less dense the pattern, the greater the effect. A dense pattern, even if it's small scale, creates a busy feeling within a room. There's no right or wrong in choosing colors as long as you are happy with the results. We must, however, give careful consideration to these color choices because color alone can completely transform a home. Now, I'm going to read a little bit more next time uh, from an Emily Barnes book about uh, thrift in the home. And she discusses how to make a space in your home really nice for yourself. And for some people, all they need to do and all they have time for do is to clean house, keep it and keep their meals on the table and that's enough. And that's fine. But for others, maybe we want we get that under our belt. We get that kind of where we can manage that really well. We'd like to go a little further. We'd like to create a nice color spot in our home. And so I want to read uh, this Mrs. Dunwoody's letter that she wrote at the beginning of this book and I want to thank you again for sending this to me is it Michelle and just so nice for your note and for this this is going to give me a lot of material for a long time dear precious children see this is why I'm telling you kids you need to have a a journal or an art journal or a mini journal that has pockets in it where you can also stick pieces of you know recipes and um, things that the memories and things you went to photographs um, and pieces of things from magazines just just things like that because here she just wrote this to her children dear precious children this notebook is the result of a lifetime of experience observation and reading I began these my notes to you in the year 1866 no untried theory is offered and much labor and consideration have been bestowed upon these instructions consider that writing written learning is a fixed luminary which after the cloud that had it hidden has passed away it again is bright in its proper station. So books are faithful repositories, which may be neglected or forgotten, but when opened again, will impart instruction. That's deep. 
It is my sincere hope that you'll find this notebook a companion of invaluable service and a constant advisor whose opinions may be trusted as entirely reliable. As you have heard me say countless times, method is the soul of management. There again, you might have to dwell on that for a long time. Method is the soul of management. Well, of course, in these notes, I have endeavored to impart the knowledge necessary for keeping a neat, well-ordered home. But beyond that, I wish for you to understand the larger issues of homekeeping, creating an environment in which all family members grow and thrive. That's so important. You know, I was thinking it's nice. Uh, most women have always wanted a, a home or a nice home. And I think we need to think first uh, to ask God to have a nice family, nice children who do the right thing, and a good, a good husband who has good character, who will always do the right thing, um, that is, that is, uh, that promotes the happiness of his family, and and quit praying for the nice home. Well, of course, a home is uh, the meaning of home is the dwelling plus the family together makes the home. There's the house, there's the family, and then there's the home. So the home is a combination of both. And so we all want a wonderful home, but that includes a nice family that where, where the children and the parents and uh, are kind of cohesive and happy and uh, have uh, other good friends, and we'll, we'll pray for that, and then the home will take care of itself, right? In these notes, I've endeavored to impart the knowledge necessary for keeping a neat, well-ordered home. But beyond that, I wish for you to understand the larger issues of homekeeping, creating an environment in which all family members grow and thrive, a place where each member may evolve to the full extent our Creator intended. It is my That's one reason I homeschooled and why I'm homeschooling you, because it helps you to... Uh, bring out the full extent of what you're capable of, of your full potential, and how many of us have potential that lie buried because we have uh, thought that we're only limited and we we cannot go beyond what we already know, but we can learn. And it is my belief that the housewife makes the home and the home makes the nation. Uh, this is one thing that's lacking in our political leaders is they don't mention the home do they? They always mention the economy. Uh, but if the home fails, their their whole business will collapse. As Miss, Mrs. Julia Wright has written, children are born into a home and they shall be in it all of their lives. Yeah, children are born into a home, not an institution, not a business, not a... Uh, not a something else it's all about the home which of course that is the one thing that stands between uh, the success of the state and failure is they can't conquer the home what this home makes them they shall train up their future children to be ennobled or warped as they as here they learn they shall carry their energies and example into the world, for better, for worse, and here was taught them. In this home, children receive also their instruction. Their worldly occupations are chosen and fortunes laid up for them. Their moral character is determined. You shall see thus that all the energies, the business, the industries, the inventions of the world have really their center, their inception in the home. It is the world's animate heart erase all homes all home life ties needs joys and how long they would the wheels of labor and commerce move on how important then is every home what a tremendous responsibility surrounds its founding how needful to count the cost well that's interesting the first institution god ever created was the home wasn't it and so it is important as you go forth into the world to begin the prodigious work of life it is my greatest wish that you find success and happiness in creating your own home. I have no doubt in your ability to accomplish this, for in all of you 
I find that the great lesson I have striven to impart to you is well learned. The most exquisite pleasure of life is giving pleasure to others in the home. As the good Lord taught us, the finest quality of greatness is service. And so I remain your loving and devoted Big Mama Dunwoody. I will be reading more of this. So excellent. And also, in reading that, just reminded me of how you can make your, you might long to go to an art museum, let's say, but you can make your own art museum, you know, in the home. Uh, the paintings of all your children can be hung and put around the house, and you can create your own art museum. You can also, in the like in the olden days, we used to take the uh, photographs from really good magazines and frame them and hang them up. Uh, and then, of course, our father taught us to paint pictures, so you can create your own life at home. You can have your own um, singing group you can have your own paintings you can have your own restaurant you can have everything that you want that's out there you can create for the home of course we know we have to go out there and get our supplies and our ideas but in general our life is going to be spent in the home and so today ladies i hope you will give it the honor that it deserves by dressing up for it and by really caring for it so I'll read you this scripture before I go, and it's from Second Peter, and I have read Second Peter for you many times. That's the book that has that verse in it. Make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and your virtue with knowledge, etc. Well, this is something else, <clears throat> and it's the ending of the the book, uh, <clears throat> and it says. Take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability. You need to think about that. You know, you can lose your own stability by believing everything and being full of anxiety over what you're hearing on the news. We just heard terrible news from one of the governors, and I thought, well, we'll see about that. Maybe God has different plans. And so I am not going to uh, create any level of fear. I'm going to just... Well, you get... Uh, excited or upset about what you're hearing and what you're seeing and what the government's doing to you then just paint a wall change a change something uh, change your furniture around go and find a new recipe and uh, or take a course in something just go and do something that improves you and improves your home and improves your children and improves your skills and improves yourself just don't just ignore them they can't make a life for you and even every, if everything was normal, you would still have to learn. You would still have to do yourself. The convenience of the commercial world has kind of pulled us along for many years and uh, kind of regulated our home life. But we can now become the masters of our own lives. And so this could be our greatest reaction. So let me read this again. Take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Well, there's a big order there. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's going to be quite a job to do even the instructions to women at home in here from Titus 2 and 2 Timothy 2.15 are uh, astonishingly deep even when it says that the women should be keepers at home well what are keepers at home you're just going to have to investigate that a little bit you're going to have to go find references to that and, and and learn from other people and just research it so you get deeper and deeper into understanding what that means and so grow in the grace and the, you notice there was a negative and then a positive I'll just kind of read that again. It said, uh, it said, if I can find it here, it said, take care that you do not get carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability. Look at there. That's the way that you, you say, how can I make myself stable? How can I make my children stable? Well, you'll lose your stability if you are carried away with the error of lawless people. 
And we know who the lawless people are, don't we? I mean, some of our own uh, world leaders are lawless. But grow, now see, here's the opposite. See, there's a negative and then there's a positive. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's mental growing. That's becoming more knowledgeable. And knowledge seems to erase fear. So when you grow in that, in knowledge, uh, when you don't know where something is coming from and uh, or you hear a noise in the night and you don't know where it is, it's, you, you tend to be more fearful. But when you figure out it was just something loose that was uh, hitting your wall or something, you go outside in the morning and there it was, it doesn't make you fear because you now have knowledge. You've researched it. So ladies, I hope that this has been beneficial to you. And I hesitate to ask you to leave a comment because one of the reasons I'm doing this is so that you can get something done and I don't expect you to take time out to leave a comment but if you'd like to I would appreciate it it motivates me and I love coming to talk to you and I hope I see you soon bye